Hey, good morning. Uh, welcome to Touch Space Daily Surprise <laughs> on a Saturday. Just hanging out. I say, you know what? I didn't get outside today. I was so exhausted from yesterday. Yesterday was such a busy day. Um, was out uh, hanging out with the Manhattan Chamber of Commerce. We had um, what we call networking around town. And uh, we met at uh, Pew. He's saying it wrong. Pewtery, Pewtery, uh, is, which is a amazing uh, event space restaurant in Manhattan in the Meatpacking District. And it was such a great place to hang out, uh, meet new people. Got to meet a wonderful couple, police officer and uh, financial advisors, and um, had a great conversation with them. And I always say, even on one of the ambassadors there, I try not to. I'm not, even though I, I mean, I, I kind of debate, should I just be like roaming around the room and saying hello to every single person? Uh, I do that in a way, but most of the time I just try to like find just a couple of people and just have conversations with, and most people that go to networking events, they just come like ready to give out their cards. And I always say, do not go to networking events and just throw, throw out your card. Uh, it is so important to just meet people one by one. Build relationships, build conversations, and then move on to the next person and then follow up with the people you meet. And um, so that was yesterday. It was great. Uh, um, Pewtery is also Black-owned. And thank you, Alice, for such an amazing time uh, supporting uh, the Manhattan Chamber at your business. And also, it was just a great collaboration. And, uh, and the food was excellent. And uh, and Alice shared with us that everything is made from scratch. Everything, well, ninety nine point nine percent, and it was absolutely wonderful. Hey, let's see who's in the building. I see somebody's in the building. Eldridge is in the building. What's going on, Mister E? Hey, Doctor Tachi's in the building also, popping in. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just here hanging out, just kind of recapping um, the week. Uh, it was such a uh, I am. I can tell you I'm exhausted. I mean, I was going to get up and go out to the farmer's market this morning, and I said, nope, it ain't going to happen. I am not going to the farmer's market today. And uh, I was going to go to our Prospect Park farmer's market and share that with you guys. Uh, <laughs> I, said, I love the hanging of out. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so... Again, it was, and it was so windy yesterday. Um, for those that were out, out and about in New York City last evening, the winds were 40 miles an hour. And um, it was just incredible. Hey, Ole. Uh, Ole is Ole from East Africa. How you doing, my friend? Uh, life from Serengeti, uh, Tanzania, East Africa. You know, we, Ole, we have to talk uh, because... It is a desire for me to get back to Africa, and um, I'm trying to see where where will I land? Will I be in Kenya? Will I be if I'm in Kenya? If I go to Kenya, um, then uh, Tanzania is not that far away, and I have not been to East Africa. I've been to West Africa. I've been to South Africa, but I've not been to North Africa, and I've never been to um, East Africa. So uh, I want to get those off my uh, my my checklist and get back into traveling. So I guess I'll be waiting for some good sponsors. And so as things happen, we will get our, you know, hopefully we'll get some sponsors here on YouTube. And uh, and that will enable me to travel and do some travel um, shows, which is dear to my heart. I would love to have like Touch Base Daily uh, on location in, uh, you know, Tanzania, Touch Base Daily on location in Kenya, Touch Base Daily in you know South Africa. So we'll see what the future holds. That is something that I'm definitely like praying for the opportunity to do in the future. And um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. I would love that. Uh, yes, we will be talking. Let's talk. I love that. Um, look, every great, every great invention. Every great, you know, movement, every great thing has begun with a conversation. Yeah, so 
but I, yeah, it, I think it would be a great idea. And um, so I will have to come out to uh, Tanzania, hang out with you and hang out with the folks there. I've always wanted to go to Tanzania and um, so, and then see how, how life is, how I can manage and create something really beautiful for folks to travel to Tanzania and do like a photography tour, go to Serengeti and, um, and take the photos of the migration. And um, cause that's what most people travel to Serengeti for. That would be awesome. Um, Dr. Tachi says, I've heard Tanzania is beautiful. Tanzania is gorgeous. Uh, I have several friends that have visited Tanzania and they absolutely loved it. Um, however, they've gone with tour groups. So I need to figure out a way to go by myself <laughs> because I like to go to these places by myself to kind of like um, zero in on the places to, to stay and meet the locals. I like going to meet the locals. I don't like... Um, commercial travel as much. I mean, sometimes we have no choice. Um, for We need the organization and we need the contacts. But when you go as a photographer, you want to have maybe one or two contacts on the ground and then travel around with your contacts and really give you access to places that tourists do not go. And that's what makes photographing places like Tanzania or well, any place outside. Oh, maybe you came to New York. You don't want to go to the, yeah, you know, I mean, obviously everyone wants to go to Times Square for like part of their vacation. But it's always to come, it's always great to come to New York, meet people that live here so they can take you to the hole in a wall for great breakfast, the hole in a wall for good dinner, the un of the obscured places in your city. Uh, and then when you go back to your country or back to your city or your town, you're like, man, I had an awesome time in New York. And I didn't even go to the Empire State Building. <laughs> you know, so it's always good to go with the uh, people um, that live there is so important. Uh, Ole says, um, culture, immersion, and eco-tourism is a great experience. I love it. I used to travel literally to two or three countries every year, obviously until I became a full-time photographer. <laughs> Finances aren't as fluid as it used to be. Um, so I will you know, work for, wait for projects to be able to do that. Um, but I have gone, I mean, the last big trip outside the country uh, was Iceland. Yeah, so my last big trip out of, of America was Iceland to photograph the eruptions. Uh, which the eruptions are back. And I am like my, uh, I'm twiddling my thumbs, my thumbs, my I said thumbs, my thumbs <laughs> to go back to Iceland um, to photograph more volcanoes, uh, more of the volcanoes that's eruption, erupting there. Uh, yeah, that's what we do. That's what we do. We just, you know, it's about getting out into the world. I, I, you're never too old to travel. And you're never too old to experience something new. And that's what I love about, you know, community. And, and because of technology, we're all stitched together. We're no longer estranged. Um, like, oh my gosh, Africa is so far-fetched. No longer. So many African-Americans travel to Africa today. Uh, back in the day, it was just like, just the elite traveled to Africa. Um, so... Yeah, I, I cannot wait to get back. And so I, I am definitely going to work on getting some sponsorships so that way we can make these new um, ventures happen because you don't want to, what I've learned now in business is that you try to have everything you do be financed by the business. So for instance, I have the Touch Base Daily and we have a Touch Base Daily meetup. So I did not even know that it had a, a membership fee, <laughs> but TouchBase, um, met, the Meetup app created a a, a, um, a fee to join, which I was like, at first I was like, do I get rid of this thing? But then I said, and then I talked to a couple of people that had already signed up and they were like, no, Ron, this is good. It's only $35 for the year. 
and it makes sense because it pays for the meetup. Because <laughs> you know, you gotta to be on meetup, you have to pay to be on meetup. And so the business model should always be that everything you take on in business should pay for itself, at least at the minimum, pay for itself. You shouldn't be cutting into your profits. You shouldn't be cutting into your um, finances to build out something new. You know, right? Sometimes you know, sometimes you might have to do it once in a while, but you really should have your business finance business parts of it. Uh, Janice says, neither did we, but that's why I couldn't RSVP. Ah, there you go. But I saw that you RSVP this morning. Uh, Janet is in the building. I love my Janet. Janet is like a, 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 a rose. I love my Janet. Um, but yeah, but in a business model, you should always have, if you're going to step out on ventures to build your business or to take on new um, additions to your business, you should have them finance. It's like the my meetup, RLP for photo photographers meetup, it pays for itself. Um, so that way I'm not taking out, because for four years of RLP, urban photographers meetup on meetup, I pay for that out of my pocket to be on meetup. And folks don't know, I think it's $160 every six months to be on meetup. Uh, so that's almost, what, 300 and change every year that you pay to help, you know, to kind of like connect with people. So the good thing about um, having these memberships is that it helps pay for the platforms that you're able to put on. Um, same thing with um, uh, Janice says, thanks. Yes, I can be. <laughs> Janice says, thanks, Ron. Yes, I can be thorny. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you, Janice. <laughs> But doesn't it make sense? Doesn't it make sense? Um, you know, even um, like coming on here every day and being on now StreamYard, what is that, $25 a month? But $25 is not a lot of money a month to be online like we are here on StreamYard. Uh, but the Patreon community pays for that. So that's that's what we do, right? So the Patreon community pays for my time on StreamYard. So that way I can come on to you, spend time with you every day and bring you guests on Wednesdays and talk tips of photography on Tuesdays and to give you some motivation on Monday and hang out with Chris on Thursdays and Fridays and whatever else to go. Oh, let's touch and base with you guys on a Saturday morning. Um, but yeah, so everything should, I mean, I mean, all you business people out there, um, that will see this video or any of you guys that are building your business, uh, your, um, what do you call it? Your, your hobby with making money or your side hustle. Um, everything should pay for itself. Okay. So that's always, that. I mean, that's what you, you, after being in business for six, going on seven years, you start to learn that money could fly out of the, out of your coffers very easily. And so you want to make sure you take care of that. Uh, everyone who participates in social media should understand the dollars. Indeed. Yes, there are dollars connected to social media. Um, even if it's just your time. Um, for instance, Dr. Tachi, uh, we were, you know, we, we were on with Dr. Tachi last night on uh, media, um, indie media, indie suit media. And uh, which was great because no one has ever seen me laying in my bed alive. <laughs> and so I was in my bed. I was too exhausted to go to my desk. And uh, I was like, I'm just going to lay here and participate. And we had so much fun. And that's, again, uh, the beauty of community is that you don't have to always dress up to attend. And, um, and we just had a great time talking about the week. And for those that will see this video and or those that are here right now, Indie Suit Media is an amazing platform for so many creatives. And Dr. Tachi has been working, working hard to make this platform for everyone. 
and uh, and people don't understand the work that goes behind starting a network. Shoot, starting this touch base daily is was work. <laughs> it's work every day. Like I mentioned last week, um, it's it, when you know creating touch base daily is a three hour a day endeavor. I spend an hour before and I spend an hour after. But then it's not even counting the the days, uh, the, the parts of the day that I'm looking at media and looking at the news and checking in at CNBC or Martin Rowland or um, John Lennon, John Lennon, and all the people, all the different platforms that I like to research. And before I come out and say something here, because the, the chief rule of journalism, which I did not go to school for journalism, <laughs> but I like, I'm a journalist in my head. Um, is that you should have two or more sources to back up something that you're about to talk about. Am I correct, Dr. Tachi? Because Dr. Tachi did study journalism, um, and she is a journalist. But you should always have two or more sources to back up something you are going to say in public. Because you want to always inform people with good information so touch base daily does take a lot of work but it's a lot of fun <laughs> it is a whole lot of fun first of all i'm not doing anything i don't normally do uh in that in that aspect i am a news junkie so i live on news all day i know that's ridiculous for some folks but for some of us news news nerds out there this is what we do we uh, i'm 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 always interested in what's going on domestically I'm also, I'm always, I've always been this way since I was a kid, been interested in what's going on in what's called geopolitical arenas. Uh, I want to know what's going on in Africa. I want to know what's going on in um, Europe. I want to know what's going on in South America. I want to know what's going on in Canada. I want to know. I just am that guy. And, um, you know, because some of these things do affect us, you know, here at home. And so it's so good to know what's going on around the globe so that way you are well informed. You know, think about all the folks that when uh, COVID happened four years ago, um, and most people were not looking at the news like I was looking at the news. For instance, I knew in October, well, it was the end of October, beginning of November, that COVID was coming. Why? Because I was looking at all the coverage in Europe. Europe had so many deaths and so many things going on that were happening um, well into in December of 2019. And so as I began to see the news in Europe, guess what Ron did? Ron went into his savings and began to stock up the house. So that way, when the rush happened, Ron was already, like food was in the cabinet, food was in the freezer. I was stocked up well before the city shut down. I really only went to the store for what we call the perishables. But I began stocking up before COVID hit Amer the American shores, I started filling the house up with food, filling the house up with water, filling the house up because I saw what was going on geopolitically around the world and what was happening in Europe. I think Europe was the first. And then, uh, then you kind of like saw what was going on in China. And so you were looking at China, then you were looking at Europe, and you're like, uh-uh, uh-uh, warning signs, it's coming to America. We're all connected. We are all connected globally. So hat off to all the nerds out there that are concerned about things that are going on politically uh, overseas, because you will be informed before it hits the shores of America. And that is important. So, and I felt really good when everybody was rushing, trying to grab the toilet paper 
<laughs> the toilet tissue and all the other stuff that people were out of last year, you know, in twenty in twenty twenty. Um, but yet, Ron was ready, and um, so we nerds. We're using on we're on the pulse of things that are going on around the world. Um, Janet says, Dr. Tachi, I've been in Kenya and neighboring. Here we go. Let me put that up there. Dr. Tachi, I've been in Kenya, neighboring Tanzania, in East Africa, but would love to go to West Africa. Look at that. So we need to figure out a way for Janet to show us around in East Africa. And then Dr. Tachi and I can show her around in West Africa. <laughs> How about that, Janet? Oh man, I miss. You know, I when I, I I Nigeria is home to me. I I miss. You know, and I I didn't. Nigeria became so important to me because my buddy lived there, and I would visit, and I became more in love with Nigeria every time I visit. The people the culture, the food. And I was like, this is home. Nigeria, Nigeria was home. And I would go to different homes. I went to people that lived in Lagos. I went to Vic, uh, Vic, uh, Victoria Island. I went to uh, Abakuta. I went to outside of the borders, um, Mar Maryland, or we had to call it, and, um, different places in um, Nigeria. And every place I would go, I would just fall in love, fall in love with the people. Um, first of all, also, there's just some beautiful people in Africa. I mean, Africans are so beautiful. Now, I, now I'm just, you know, there are Africans that have acne. <laughs> they're African. Not all Africans have smooth skin. <laughs> you know, like that's the that's the false idea in America. Ooh, you're you must be African. You're so African because your skin is so smooth. Ugh. Crap. A lot of people, just like in America, just like white folks, just like any other part of the world, teenagers have acne in Africa, just like anywhere else in the world. <laughs> but I do have to say there's some beauty. It's just, I just love being around. And it's just like any any other nationality. Like I look at my friends who are Italian. They love to go back to Italy. My friends who are Irish love to go back home to Ireland. Friends that are Chinese. I have friends who are Chinese that love to go to China. And, um, and so, and there's something about being back home. And even if you weren't born and raised there, you know, there's just something about connecting with people that look like you, maybe sound like you, <laughs> maybe act like you, or even just simply your customs that you grew from that you didn't even know you had. Um, and then when I was in Nigeria, would be, like I said, every time I would go to Nigeria, I was like, I can't leave this place. And then it was, it was that, des that desire to go to Nigeria that spawned me into going into, um, you know, doing my ancestry.com. And then I found out that I was but I think it's, uh, well, I found I was 84% African and 12% European. And I found out that I think it was 67, somewhere in the 60s, that I am Nigerian. And then it made sense. It was like, wow, I am Nigerian descendant. That's why I love this place. There's something about me that loves and it was interesting. I, I mentioned this uh, last night when I was talking to some folks as we were networking and talking. I noticed that I've been drawn throughout my life to different places around the world. Like I love the Scandinavian countries. You know, I, I, I love the Scandinavian countries. But, and I was like, why? 
Why do I love going to England? Why do I love going to France? Well, I, do we call Scandinavia? France, the French are not really Scandinavian. They're the Persians, Parisians. Um, but Iceland and places like that. And then what I found out that when I looked at my my DNA from Ancestry.com, that a lot of my DNA was from those places. The only place I haven't gone to that my DNA is represented is Ireland. And I want to go to Ireland. I really do want to go to Ireland. I've, I've always wanted to go there and I've always been drawn to Ireland because of the green hills of Ireland. Or, uh, and I still want to go to Scotland. So Ireland and Scotland, Ireland and Scotland. That's where I would like to go. And um, so I, I definitely have those, but that is part of my ancestry. And, um, you know, it's just interesting that we're drawn to a lot of places that are part of our DNA. And it seems like every place I've been, most of the places, has been from my DNA. Uh, Serena says, my cousin went to Ireland. My cousin went to Ireland and loved it. I heard Ireland is beautiful. I also heard, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I look at documentaries about travel. So I, I'm a, tra I, I mean, that's my thing. I love to travel. I love to travel the globe. And um, what was fascinating about Ireland is that uh, folks in Jamaica have such connection to Ireland. Right, um, because uh, there were Irish slaves and they were also Irish indigenous servants, and they were all sent. A lot of them were sent to Jamaica, and that's why you have so many Jamaicans with Irish last names, like McDonald or McCall, or you know all the Mex, McCode or Mc McThis, McThat. They're all in Jamaica with Mex, the MC, because of their connection to Ireland. At the end of the day, we're all connected. Isn't that beautiful? At the end of the day, we're all connected. There's no more. There are very few homogeneous societies on the earth. There are only, there, then there are only a few of them now. Most of us are connected. She <laughs> says the people of Ireland are a different kind of <laughs> kind. Different kind of kind. <laughs> yes, but I've always wanted to go to Ireland. And um so I got a couple of, I got a couple of places on my list. And um you know I said I still got some time to travel. And, uh, and I'm hoping I would definitely, so I'm putting it into the universe. I would love to take touch base daily into travel. So we will do it. It will happen one day. It will happen because you know why? Because I believe it will happen. I, I look, shoot, I'll be hanging out with uh, Trish in Hawaii. I'll be like, hey, Trish, I'm coming to Hawaii. Coming to Hawaii. And then while I'm in Hawaii, Welcome to Touch Base Daily, Hawaii edition. Wouldn't that be cool? Anyway, I always imagine. I'm always dreaming. Uh, half passport will travel, it says, it says Trish. I just got a new passport during co after COVID. So my passport is craving for new stamps. My old passports are all covered up and I had to get a new passport. <laughs> so my my first, my passport, the only thing in my new passport is Iceland. I need to mark it up. My passport is craving for some travel. Oh, Trish says she got a new one also. Yeah. I love to travel the world. Any, any, how many of you guys... Okay, here's a question from each of you that are in here. There's eight of us in this room today. Isn't this great? It's like hanging out at the, at the water cooler. 
How many of you? No, let's go back. What is your favorite overseas place to travel? How about that? I, I'm curious. All of you, all of you participate. What, where in the world is your favorite place? Your ultimate place of journey that you would go back to again for a second round or maybe a third round? Where in the world is your favorite? I will have to say for myself, and this is a tie, this is a tie when I say this, is Johannesburg, South Africa. (laughs) Excuse me, Johannesburg, South Africa. And do you know why I pick South Africa, uh, Johannesburg? Is because Johannesburg is a hub. And from Johannesburg, I can get to all my other favorite places like Namibia. Namibia, Zimbabwe, uh, Botswana. And I've never flown from Johannesburg to Australia. And I always said, if I'm in the next time I'm in South Africa, Australia will be on the on the list. Because one is I don't have to travel from America to Australia, which is like 20, what, 26 hours on in a flight. Um, but I would love to, the next time I'm living in Johannesburg, in, yeah, Joburg, in Joburg, um, the next time I'm living in South Africa, I will definitely take advantage of going to Australia. I met a young lady um, last night, Nicole, and she says she loved Australia. I love, I would love to go to Australia. I have several friends that have gone and there's so many beautiful landscapes to photograph in Australia. Um, Trish says, Thailand, Ron? Oh, oh, now. I have never been to Asia. Never been to Asia. And so I'm like, I want to go to Asia. And so this is the key to going to Asia is that you're supposed to go to, well, there's, there's, there's different ways. When you go to China, you go to China and go to all of, you try to go to as many places of China as possible. China is so huge. So China, you do alone. China is by itself because you want to go to Hong Kong. You want to go to Beijing. You want to go to all these other places that are on the coast, that are inland. In China, China, you go by yourself. You just do that by itself. Uh, but Thailand, Thailand is part of what's called the trio. And you're probably saying, "What is Ron talking about?" The travel trio of Asia: Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam. You have to do all three together. You have to give yourself three weeks at least to go to the triple, triple spot of Asia, Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam. So I would love to go to those places. That is uh, one of my neighbors just bought a home there. So guess what? Ron is kind of like trying to figure out how I'm going to go and spend time at my neighbor who lives in my building right here, but he has bought a home. Oh, no, he didn't buy it in Thailand. Duh. He bought it in the Philippines. <laughs> not, the, not Thailand. He bought it in the Philippines. Now, I would love to go to the Philippines, but the Philippines, I hear, is extremely hot and humid. And I just can't function in hot and humidity. And I heard in Thailand, sorry, in um, uh, the Philippines, it is hot all year round and humid. They have rainy season and dry season, but all seasons are hot and humid. 
I don't know. I don't know if I want to go to the Philippines. I wouldn't last. I can't function in heat. Hey, look who came. Look who's in. Wait, am I seeing Dorian in the building? Mr. Dorian is in the building. Dorian C. Bernard is in the building. He says, uh, sis, where is that? I don't know where that is. Sycalis? Sycalis? Am I saying it right? Sycalis? Sycalis Island? Am I saying it right? Shoot. I don't know where that is. I've never heard of this place, Dorian. That's why I love having, having conversations because then we could talk about all these places and you guys give me new ideas. Never heard of the Sekulis. I might say, I think it's Sekulis. The Sekulis Island. Never heard of it. Um, Dr. Tachi says, Canada. Actually, I haven't gone yet, but we'll be there in a few months. Bangkok. I'm guessing I will like that. I also liked Ghana. Ghana. I love Ghana. Ghana. I was mentioning to um, Nicole yesterday. I said, you need to go. She said, I've never been to Africa. I said, you need, if you go to Africa for the first time and you're leaving from America, the best place to go is Ghana because the flight isn't so long. Unless you want to go to South Africa, it's a long flight from JFK uh, or from the, you know, from the, from the States. But um, Ghana is where every important black person has gone. The Obamas, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Maya Angelou, and the list goes on and on and on. Ghana is like a like a pilgrimage. Ghana is beautiful. There's nothing like going to Cape Coast. Cape Coast. And then seeing the slave castle of Cape, Cape Coast. And then taking the highway, not the highway, but the road over to Almina to see the first ever slave castle in Ghana. One of the most beautiful places I have ever been. Um, well, let's see what else is out here. Let me see what else you guys are saying. I see. Okay, let's see what other places you love on this thing here. Our folks in Cuba will welcome you home. Janet Cuba says, we'll welcome you home like nobody's business. Really? That's another place I've always wanted to go. I have not gone yet. Gosh, you guys are reminding me how many places are still on my list. And I'm getting older. <laughs> I'm running out of time. I got 40 more years. I know that sounds like 40 more years, right? If I get to live to a 100, 40 years, of, I need to travel. I need to get to traveling in, in the next 10 years for sure. Um, Cher says Ireland's a beautiful country. Uh, let's see here. Passports, I see here. I hope everyone in here has their passports. Who doesn't have a passport? Yeah, you got to get that. Pa yeah, the passport needs to be christened. Um, Chris B is in the building. What's going on, Chris? I'm not a traveler. I need to do better. Chris B, you are missing out. There's nothing like traveling. It's the greatest. If there's a hobby to be had, it's got to be traveling. And what you notice about travelers, no matter where they are in the world, they have such a beautiful perspective of people. There's such a love for humanity when it comes to travelers. Travelers appreciate people. Uh, Trish says, really want to go to Africa, South Africa. Ooh, I can tell you, South Africa is one. Uh, I had the opportunity, like I said, to live there for th three months of my, in the beginning of my photography career. It was the best three months, one of the best three months of my life. Uh, 
it probably was the best three months of my life. It really changed me. Um, love it. I will travel, says Amparo. Um, Trish says, and New Zealand. Ah. You know, often when we think of Australia, at least in my head, I think of New Zealand. And New Zealand is really a country of its own. It has all kinds of, it has its own agriculture, ecosystem, uh, animals that are nowhere else on the planet. New Zealand. Yeah. Um, and Paolo says, I Iceland, Costa Rica, Southwest U.S., Washington, uh, and uh, Hawaii. Is that H.O. Rainforest? Let's go. Um, do you know I've been to 40 states out of the 50? And then there's, 40, there's 10 left. And... Four of them I have no desire to go because I just don't like <laughs> I won't I won't even I won't even I won't even go there but there are 10 states that I have not been to in this country in this beautiful place called America the United States of America I've been to 40 out of 50 states which I'm glad I've done that uh oh yes oh um mother mother root mother root i've said it me because a is e in spanish melar melarique uh, spain melarique spain uh i've been to salamanca spain i've been to uh segovia i've been to toledo i've been to madrid and where else have I been? Uh, there's one more. Avila. Um, yeah, Avila. 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 Yes. Yes. Spain is beautiful. And if you love food, Spain. If you love cathedrals and churches, the most beautiful edifices in the world are in Spain. Um, Trish says, Dr. T, okay, going on, going on, going on. Trish says, Canada is fantastic. I love Canada. I've been to every Providence except for, uh, what's the one in the middle? I've been to the, e I've been to West Coast, East Coast, uh, Inland, East Coast. Where is it? The one, I've only been to, I, I'm missing one province in, um, in, um, Canada. I love Canada. I love Canada. And we do not blame Canada. What's going on, Rashawn? Rashawn is in the building. Welcome. Good morning. Okay. It's hot, hotter, and hottest. <laughs> yeah, I know that's the Philippines, right? Um, she lives in Malaysia. Oh, Malaysia is another place. That's another hot spot. Like hot, hot. I cannot live. I cannot visit those places. Um, and Paulo says, I would love to do Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and Dr. Tachi says, I'm getting ready to buy a place in Bangkok. Really? Are you serious, Dr. Tachi? If you are, I know where I'm visiting. <laughs> First of all, I'm coming down to Florida. You're the only reason. I re the Dr. Tachi's the only reason I want to travel to Florida. So I, I, my cousins are probably like, what? What about us? I have no desire to go to Florida other than to meet Dr. Tachi and to go to um, Basil, right? Am I saying it right, Dr. Tachi? Art Basil? I want to go. I need to make plans for ne next year's or the end of this year. I think it's, it's 2024. I need to go to Art Basel. Dr. Tachi, here I come. Um, oh, say shells. Okay, there we go. Shells. Thank you for the brief. Thank you for the <laughs> pronunciation of that place, uh, Dorian. Uh, Hannah's in the building. What's going on, Hannah? It's so good to see you, Hannah, in the building. And um, so glad to hear things are going well at home. And with your daughter, and I'm um, so happy. And uh, I don't know, I won't mention it unless you tell me I can mention it, but you know, Hannah is back in, in the fold. 
Um, she's been um, working on some family issues and so good to see Hannah. And um, Seychelles. <laughs> no, no, try Seychelles. <laughs> Uh, Empire says, um, the Falkland Islands on my bucket list, as well as Vietnam, Japan, and Costa Rica. Now, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what's good about the Falkland Islands. The Falkland Islands. I know that I remember when England was fighting over it for a moment. <laughs> the people of uh, the Falkland Islands were like, we, we, are, we are separating from the British empire and they were like no you're not oh no you're not and uh england you know the british the british send their their naval ships to get them back in line in the falkland islands that's the only thing i know about the falkland islands uh trish says dr glass she is enjoying uh seychelles yeah uh, helping me with that word right um, Rashawn says, thanks, Hannah. And yes, I am. My son and I are going to hang out later. Uh, Ron can take home, <laughs> wait, home, home, pathet, home, <laughs> home pathetics or whatever the, I, I, my, for the heat. Oh, no, no, no. I cannot. The heat is too much. I, I cannot function in high humidity. Just can't do it. Uh, I wanted to go to Seychelles Island. Look at that. I got it because of Janet and, and Dorian. Dorian, Seychelles Island. Right off the East Africa. Off East Africa. Ah, it's off East Africa. Wow. I got it. Seychelles. Seychelles. Got it. Uh, what's the weather like in Ghana, Ron? It's hot in certain times of the year. Um, I was in Ghana. I've gone to Ghana usually in February because I I'm usually I used to be in Africa for my birthday every February for about ten years. And when I would visit Nigeria, that's when I flew into Ghana. Um, so it can be very hot in uh, February, which is. I heard it could be even hotter during the other parts of the year. So it was usually like 90, 91, 92 in February. But most of the time, it's, unless you're by the coast, it's a little bit of a drier heat. Yeah. But it is tro it has a tropical feel to it, Ghana. Um, I see here, um, Bali. Ooh. Someone told me, they said, Ron, you could go to Bali for cheap. Now, I always thought, I was always under the impression that only the rich go to Bali. I don't know why I had that impression in my head, but someone someone busted my myth, <laughs> a myth, a, what, what, myth buster, um, like, last month about Bali. Yeah, I did not know. I always say, oh, Bali's for the rich. That's why I never put it on my list to go. Okay, Dr. Tachi. Okay, Dr. T. Would love to. La la la. Okay, going through. Yeah, I want to go to Cuba. I want to go to Cuba. Amparo, we need to get. We need to figure out how to. We got to figure out how to monetize our platforms to go to these places. Fifi's in the building. What's going on, Fifi? Fifi's in the building, and I will be in I will be in um, Charlotte. Um, come May, the end of May, mid May, I'll be in Charlotte, and I'm looking forward to hanging out with Fifi and the in the in the in the in the, um, in the P the RLP family in uh, Charlotte area. So we'll be hanging out down there uh, in May. Uh, Trish Amparo says, "I can't wait to go to Costa Rica for birds and surf." Ooh. Trish, have you ever been to Costa Rica? Costa Rica is so beautiful. Again, another amazing place. You go on one side of the mountains, it's beautiful, hot, steamy sun. You go on the other side of the mountain, you go up into the mountain, you go what's, in, what's called a cloud rainforest. Uh, it's called a cloud rainforest. 
And um, so you're up in the clouds in this rainforest of uh, trees and all the rainforest vegetation is in the cloud forest. And then you go on the other side and it's West Indians and Jamaicans and Jamaica food and Costa Rican Jamaican food. Costa Rica, one of my favorite places also. Great, uh, two beautiful volcanoes. One you can climb to and one you have to kind of like see it from the distance. Yeah, Costa Rica is beautiful. What about Brazil? I've never been to Brazil. I've never been to South America. Never. And I want to go. Uh, there we go. Um, I got my passport because the dates weren't gonna gonna Cali and Miami me to death. <laughs> Dorian. Dorian's in the building. Okay, Dorian. Dorian's in the building. Um, let's see here. What else is going on here? Um, seashell, seashells, Ron, that's how. Seashells, I got it now. I got it now. Uh, Amparo, of course, I want to go to the city. Amparo, Amparo wants to go everywhere. <laughs> She's like me. Just put, just send me there and I'm going. Um, Janice says she, um, she loves Cuba, Italy, followed by somewhere in the continent of Africa. Uh, I've only been to two places in Italy. No, I've only been to one place in Italy. I've only been to Milan. Only been to Milan. I would love to go back to Italy again. If you love food, Italy, Spain, uh, yes, I can eat away. Oh, there's there's my pronunciation, uh, Mallorca. Hey, oh, is that how you say it, Mallorca? Really? Ah, thank you, Mallorca. Ah, thank you, thank you, Mallorca. Nice. See, that's why we need community because we educate each other. Um, I forty will take you from Asheville to L L A. Yeah, now Asheville last year, I had a great time for Christmas time in Asheville. Thanksgiving, Christmas time was beautiful. Alberta, Canada is beautiful. Is that what you're talking about? Alberta <laughs> is a beautiful place. Uh, I've gone to. Uh, Newfoundland on the East Coast. I've been to what they call St. John's in Canada, Quebec City in Canada, Vancouver on the West Coast. And um, yes, I've been to some cool places in Canada. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, I have good friends moving to Spain for three years this summer. We should all go and visit and touch base daily trip. You know, I am a believer in saving hotel, <laughs> hotel, hotel money. So I always visit my friends who live. And yes, I'm missing Alberta at the province. Thank you. Yes, Janet. I have not been to Alberta. I have not been to Alberta. But I heard it's beautiful. It is Alberta, I do believe, is with the Rockies, correct? I think it's the east of the Rockies. Uh, Amparo, uh, I, I would love to explore Canada. You know what I would love to do in Canada? I, I do want to, it is on my wish list, to take the, what they call the Continental Express. Uh, you leave out of Montreal and you take the train from Montreal to Vancouver across Canada. I would love to do that. Um, come on. I have a, I have a room for you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Taji. <laughs> um, yes. Okay. Go on. Wait. Someone has a birthday? Yes, right. It's Rashawn's birthday. Yes, I did wish I had a birthday yesterday and this morning. Rashawn is her birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. 
Yes, it is Rashawn's birthday. Thank you for that reminder. Um, right, Rashawn. Yes, I see that. Um, uh, happy solo return. Uh, and Paul says, I want to go to Ban Banff National Park in Canada. Uh, England is always fighting over land that is not theirs, says Dr. Tachi. <laughs> Back to the focus. Am I that far behind in this conversation? A touch base daily meetup at Art Basel. Yes, that's what we're going to. I am really planning this one. This is going to be, uh, this is something I am really putting it on the calendar to go to Art Basel and do Touch Base Daily from, from there. I am definitely, that is on my list for to this year, 2024. Um, let's see here. Am I getting everything in here? Oh, that's a good place, Janet. Chile might be an idea in South America. I mean, like I said, I've never been to anywhere in South America. Uh, however, Chile and Argentina are on my list because it is hopefully when I get my chance to go to Antarctica. Because you cannot go to Antarctica. First, you have to go to Argentina to get to Antarctica. So I always said, if I go to Antarctica, I would try to spend a month, half of it in Chile, half of it in, uh, in um, uh, Argentina. Yes. Yes. My, one of my buddies, good buddies, lived in Argentina, and I missed that opportunity to go hang out with him in Argentina. Uh, he went there for Spanish. Just to be, he went to school for Spanish. Uh, and that's how I ended up in Salamanca in um, Spain is because he was studying abroad and speaking, learning how to speak Spanish. And so I went to visit. Take advantage of your friendships. <laughs> your friendships can take you around the world. Hopefully, if you have friends around the globe. Oh, Florida has a beautiful coast I want to see. I've never been to... I've never been to Southern Florida. I've been to Tallahassee. I've been to uh, Orlando. I've been to um, St. Petersburg. I've been to, what's the other one? Um, not too far from uh, St. Petersburg. Um, yes, yeah, so I've been to that area of Florida, but I've never been to Miami, like Southern Florida. Okay, my house is not big, but some people can stay with me, and there is an Airbnb directly across from me. There we go. Let's make it happen. Um, maybe we should be. Maybe we should create something for Basil. Maybe we should. Our Basil could be a touch base daily getaway. I don't know. I mean, obviously, it would be up to every person to get there. Yes, I will not be responsible for getting people to a spot. However, we can say we're all going to be at Art Basel. Now, let's all connect at Art Basel. Okay, let's make that happen. Um, let's see here. Uh, the Falkland Islands, got that. Uh, South Island. Amparo, you want to go all over the world. I can see it. Amparo is a traveler like myself. Um, Bali, Indonesia leaves a little to be desired, but beautiful at, at times. The rich go to Indonesia because it used to be a tax haven. Really? Look at Dorian knows everything about money. Dorian, we still got to get you on Touch Base Daily on one of these Wednesdays so you can spew out all that wisdom. Dorian, we're calling Dorian. Dorian. Calling Dorian. <laughs> uh, what about rainforests in Brazil? Ah, there's so many amazing places on earth. God, there's so many amazing places. Kaladi, okay, I'm going to say this wrong. Uh, is it Kaladesi? Is it Kaladesi Island? Am I saying it right? <laughs> you know, I butcher these names. Some names I just don't know. Uh, and not a shame of it either. 
um, Paro, we think God, we think God, we think good to, uh, thoughts of travel. Okay, Brazil can be a little dangerous at times. Oh, yeah. Brazil is one of uh, the cities of Brazil of some of the most dangerous places on earth. Yes. Yes. Brazil. Uh, yes, the double L in Spanish is pronounced like ya. Yeah. Yes, I remember that from Spanish class. If you would help me to remember my Spanish class. <laughs> but I did get an A. I just didn't practice. <laughs> I did Spanish 1 and Spanish Spanish 101 and Spanish 102. Uh, Ron, no, Portugal. Now, I am planning to go to Portugal. Uh, my name, another one of my neighbors, she moved to Portugal and I am planning to visit her. Um, she is so sweet and I, and her husband and her son live right across the hall. And I said, I am coming to Portugal. She's there with her mom. And, um, so I'm going to hang out and hang out there. No one is saying Germany. Oh, I, I want to go to Germany, but it is not one of my number one spots to go. Yes. Germany has a lot of history. But it is not one of my number one spots to want to visit. And um, yeah, not one of my favorite spots. Alberta, Montiobia, Saskatchewan. <laughs> Are the considered the bread baskets of Canada. <laughs> Don't get me to mess up all these names. Oh my gosh, this is really bad. Um, uh, Manitoba, am I saying that right? And Sasquatch, 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 oh, Sasquatch one. Okay, am I saying that one right? And um, Bread Baskets of Canada, they are the planes. Um, Siri, uh, Serena says, when you sing Ron, it puts a gigantic smile on my face. <laughs> I try to sing. I try to sing once in a while. I used to be in the choir. I just, my friends used to say, Ron, you should sing solo. And I go, no, I can't. And they go, yes, you can. Solo that we can't hear you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes, I was in the choir, but very short-lived time in the choir. And Paro, I'm, I'm from New York, so I know that I know that demon from Harlem to Queens. <laughs> Let's just do an RLP international tour. Well, well, that requires a lot of money to do international tours, but it is possible. Roshan says, I would love to go to Argentina. Never been there. Argentina must be paired with Antarctica. Just saying, if you're going to go to the bottom of the planet, you better go to the very bottom. Um, Roshan says, I would love to go to Argentina. Never been there. There is a luxury camp in Antarctica that the luxury travel expert showed. He's on YouTube. Yes, you, uh, Antarctica is a spot. It is a destination. However, um, there's only a six-week window to go to Antarctica. I do believe there's only a six-week window window to go to Antarctica. So remember that when you're planning. Uh, what's up, Felicia? What's up, Rashawn? Says, hey, Mr. B is in the building. Bryson's in the building. Yes, I'm just having chat here today. I'm going to get off at 1230. So, I mean, I'm just hanging out. I'm going to make my lunch and then I'm heading to the city because we are meeting at the gallery. So um, if you are coming to the city and meeting us at the gallery, you got need to go to my, you can, oh, I don't even have my um, Touch Base Daily banner up today. Oh, what's going on, Ron? <laughs> can, should I put that back up here? <laughs> there we go. I got a little, yeah, Touch Base Daily. That's what you're watching, folks. That's what you're watching. Uh, well, it's not really technically Touch Base Daily. It's kind of like me just tuning in. But if you scan this little code up there, you will be able to get to my um, link tree. And it will give you all the information for today or anything about me is in that link tree. 
Um, Dr. Taji says, I have cousins that live in Han in Hamburg in Germany, but I'm not pre I'm not pressed to go. When it comes to Germany, I'm like, ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. <laughs> Are there a lot of black people in Germany? Not that I know of. One of my good friends is from Germany. And uh, it's not a lot of places in Germany cannot, are not welcoming to black people. So that's one of the reasons why I have not gone to Germany. <laughs> I've not even thought about Germany. It's like, uh, nah, no, not going to Germany. Uh, even though it has sparked my interest. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of places in Germany that are not friendly to black folks. Uh, there are black people that live there, though. Uh, we are everywhere. Africans are everywhere. Um, Sora Tachi, when my line sister moves back, we need to connect your cousin with her. She really loved it. Germany is beautiful. Been to Wisbaden, says Amparo. Hmm. Was it friendly to black folks when you were there? Did you feel welcomed? Oh my dear. Let's talk, let's talk offline about Germany. <laughs> says Janet. Janet says, so Janet, you know, Janet has a lot of info. So I so I know if she wants to go there. Yeah, Germany is. There's some good people in Germany, just like any other country. Good people and bad people. Uh, yes, there are military folks in Germany. Yes, yes, that's right. My cousin used to be based in Germany. Uh, Dorian ain't said but a word. Let's get it going. Felicia, my, pe my friends loved it when they were there. Okay. Uh, let me see. Oh, I'm caught up now. I'm finally caught up to the, to the feed. Serena says, yeah, she's back in the States for now, but wants to go back. She really made a life for herself out there. Found a DST chapter and everything. Hmm. Okay. Germany, may, maybe I need to reconsider Germany. I always was, I, if I ended up in Germany, it would be because I'm in Europe for another reason. I always believe in doing Europe in threes, or at least the minimum twos. So if you're in Paris, you probably want to go to London. If you are in um, Madrid, you may want to go to, um, where should you go? If you're in Spain and go to Madrid, uh, it's not exactly called uh, uh, Europe, but you want to go to Morocco <laughs> if you're in Barcelona or Madrid. Yeah, you gotta do you gotta do Europe or the European nation, the European Union, should I be saying? The European Union. You want to do it in threes. Twosies or threesies. Um, that way you save money. Guatemala, that's another great place. Belize is another great place. Oh, okay. It is time to say goodbye to all our company. <laughs> I almost went there. I'm not going to go there. I'm so tempted to say it, but I won't. Um, guys, I will see you guys at the gallery. For those that are going to be at the gallery today, um, we're going to have some good times. And for some of us, we might go and get something to eat after. Um, but the Gordon Parks exhibition I hear is amazing. It looks like there's about five or six of us going. And so I'm excited about that. And um, I want to go to Morocco. I was supposed to go to Morocco in 2019, December 2019. But because of COVID, my Morocco trip was canceled. And I have not been able to save back for it. I probably should have just taken that money and just say, hold on to the money. Uh, so that way when it becomes available, I can just go. But no. I was thinking about supplies. I didn't even know if there was going to be a Morocco <laughs> when COVID came brush came flying through the the world. Morocco is an amazing place. 
Um, this was fun as usual. Enjoy the gallery. Thank you, Dr. Tachi. It's always good to come on here and just share time with you guys. You know, this is def Saturday is a Saturday vibe. There's no format. We're just hanging out. We're just chilling, as they say. And um, it's so good to chill with you all. And um, but we will. I will see you later. And um, have a happy Easter. If you are in the city tomorrow, I will be photographing the Easter bonnet parade. So I'll be doing that tomorrow. And um, yeah, I'll be around the St. Patrick's Cathedral area. So if you're looking for me, I will be around or near St. Patrick's Cathedral. Okay, so that way, if you're looking for me, you'll know where I am. Okay, and Paro, are you going to be at the um, uh, the bonnet parade tomorrow? <laughs> Janet says, "See you later. Happy Easter, all you observers." Yeah, Morocco is beautiful. Okay, I'm out of here. I'm going to use the outro because that's how we came in. And that's how we'll go out. The outro. The outro. Here we go. Later. <laughs>